this is not like a be all end all list, but this is gonna be my top 10 tips to look for when you're going to go get yourself a used truck. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, we talk about cars, we talk about trucks, we talk a little bit about money and a lot of bit of love. So feel free, jump on the bandwagon, go ahead and hit that subscribe button over here. We are on our way to a thousand subscribers and after we get to a thousand, all right, the first thousand are gonna get something free from me because I like to give back to you. So don't hate or hesitate, jump on the bandwagon and let's do this thing. All right guys and girls for that matter, I'm excited to be sharing this video with you guys. At this point, I kind of feel like a big brother to some of you guys. I've been a father for years. Fathering all kinds of these little motherfuckers. <laughs> but all in all, if I'm gonna be this dad or this big brother figure, what I wanna talk about is maybe getting yourself into a new or used truck, or car for that matter. So after having a few car and truck buying experience nightmares on my end, I thought maybe I could share some knowledge with you guys, okay? And that's why you're here. Because maybe you're interested in getting yourself into a used truck or a used car and you want to know what to look for. And that's why I've made this video for you. Okay? So, based on my experiences, this is not like a be all end all list, but this is going to be my top 10 tips to look for when you're going to go get yourself a used truck. All right? So, get your pen and paper ready because I'm here to learn you something. So, strap in, let's have some fun, enjoy yourself take from it what you will. And let's just jump into it, here we go. Number one on our list, does it have a check engine light? You might show up, you might have seen this whole ad on Facebook Marketplace about this truck, never mentions a check engine light at all. You drive an hour to go look at this truck and then all of a sudden you notice, as soon as you turn it on, right? There it is, just staring at you in the face, right? And just giving you this unnecessary anxiety that you never knew you had. Luckily, the check engine light actually came on because sometimes what a lot of these guys do is they'll go in there with their own code reader and they'll clear the code. That's why I think that you should probably get yourself a code reader. So I just have a PT, which is not physical therapy even though that's what I do. It's for a performance tool, okay? It's a nice little code reader and you can clear codes with it. So I just threw a check engine light um, actually today. I, I, I threw this same check engine light I think here probably I don't know, about a month ago. And so I just do that code again. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through here and we're gonna read the code and I'm gonna show you guys how to use this thing because it's important that you take one of these when you're gonna go buy a used truck. Okay, you see that plug? So now we're gonna plug this back in the way it's supposed to go. Okay. And right when you plug that in, this light is gonna turn on. Okay. It's saying like basically I'm ready to start scanning it, right? This, this, uh, this truck to see what that code is. So now you're gonna turn the car on to an on position, but you're not gonna actually turn on the motor, okay? Then from here, we're gonna hit enter. Okay, oh, saying I have two codes now. Okay, let's see, let's see what these codes are, okay? Oh, one fault, okay, and one pending, all right? Let's see, let's scroll, P04, nine six that is the evap solenoid and that one's the previous code po496 okay so it's those two codes that were in there before, you know this is the same exact code so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit enter we're gonna scroll we're gonna hit erase okay erase okay either no or yes we're gonna hit yes erase done see that we can even do it again so I'll show you erase erase done good now it's gonna clear my code out. So let me show you guys something here. I'm gonna unplug this, and it's gonna go right off, okay? Boom. So it told me the previous code that I had cleared, and it's also giving me a pending one. That's the one that's still actually going on. So now, my check engine light is on. You see that? Okay, I'll even zoom in for you a little bit, cause I'm, you know, I'm such a gem. Now we turn this on, it's gonna be cleared out. Okay, code goes away, right? But we all know that this truck still threw a code. And now that code can come right back on, but you know, the last time I drove it, I drove over 100 miles and it stayed off. 
okay? You don't have to get an expensive one. You can use a cheap one. I've been using a cheap one for a really long time. With this code reader, you can actually hook it into your OBD2 sensor on the truck, right? And you can see if a code was just cleared because it will tell you a previous code that was just cleared and it will tell you any new codes that come up. So even if the check engine light isn't on, you can still put this code reader on and it will tell you if there was a previous code just cleared, which is kind of nice. When you see a check engine light, when you're going to get yourself your own used truck or used car, you got to think best case scenario and worst case scenario. So when I went to actually buy my used truck that I have right now. The, the guy never told me that it had a check engine light, okay? Which would have gave me more negotiating power, okay? We're gonna think about day one when you go look at a truck as negotiation day, okay? So on negotiation day when I met up with the guy, never told me there was a check engine light. He said, oh, it's a check engine light and it's just for the gas cap. Okay, best case scenario, it's just a gas cap. And let me tell you something, as soon as I got the truck home, the first thing I ordered then was the gas cap. And that obviously didn't do the trick. I ended up having to replace the entire EVAP system to figure out that I had a wire short, okay, along the line somewhere. And I had to take it actually to Chevy to have them throw a wire in for me. And I told them, I have a faulty hot wire somewhere that's throwing the code and I can't find it. So he said, oh yeah, sure. It was in for like two hours. They found it, charged me 400 bucks. So I'm just telling you based on experience, all right, don't get yourself into that situation. If there's a check engine light, you wanna know what it is and you wanna think worst case scenario so that you can have better negotiating power. Now, no one ever said on negotiation day that you have to go and pick up the truck that day. You might be very excited and you might be super happy and you might have a lot of emotions going, but you don't wanna go at this emotionally at all, okay? Even if you guys negotiated a price already, it's whatever. You don't have to take it for that. If he wants to sell it to somebody else for that price, he can. You want to go into it with just a clear head, right? Take your code reader with you. If you read a code and it comes up with a check engine light, you're going to tell the person, hey, I need to do a little bit more research on this before I buy the truck because you never told me that I had a check engine light. And then if he's trying to knock off money right then and there, you can say, okay, yeah, just let me think about it. I want to think about it. Okay? Because then he's already trying to knock the price down for you. So you're gonna know, hey, I'm gonna have a little bit more play here, all right? So you can save yourself a little bit of money. Now, if the guy won't sell you the truck the next day after negotiation day, then let him unfortunately take advantage of somebody else because he knows that there's more wrong with this truck um, than he's telling you. And so he knows that you know that there's something going on, so he's not gonna sell it to you now, okay? So he's gonna sell it to someone else. So let him take advantage of somebody else, but not you because you watch this video, and especially not you if you're subscribed because we're family, baby. Number two on our list, we're talking about rockers, cab corners, wheel wells, and frame rust, okay? This is one of the easier things to look for when you're gonna get yourself a used truck. A little bit of rust though is gonna go a long way. So one of the things that we're gonna look for when we go to get ourselves a used truck is we're gonna get underneath the truck. You got to, it's one of the things you gotta do. And you're gonna look underneath the doors there, okay? Those are your rockers. Behind the doors there, before you meet the bed, that's your cab corner, right? It's the corner of the cab before it goes to the bed. You wanna see if these are rusty or if they're rusted out. Because if you need to replace them and you're taking it to like a dealer, it's gonna cost you whoo, an arm and a leg. If you know how to do it yourself, even better, all right? If you're gonna get someone to do it for you that's maybe a friend or a family friend, you know, they can charge you anywhere from $500 to $1,000 and you still gotta buy the parts to cut and weld, you know, said pieces on, all right? So if your rockers and cab corners are shot, you know you're gonna have to replace them. In the state of Pennsylvania, we have to do inspections. So if you're in a state that, you know, you don't have to have car inspections, I lived in the state of Iowa for a long time, I'm telling you, it's nice, right? But in Pennsylvania, every year you gotta pay for this inspection, right? Inspection and emissions. So you can't have a check engine light on and they're gonna check everything on this truck to make sure that it's safe. And one of the things you can't have is tons and tons and tons of rust, unless you know somebody. But if your rockers and your cab corners are all the way through, you're gonna have to replace them. Just know getting into it, that can already cost you a lot of money. Now, a lot of trucks have wheel well covers, right? They had the bushwhackers, they got, you know, different covers that go over top of the wheel wells. And a lot of times people use these to cover up rust. So, on my truck as well, I took off the old wheel wells and I should have looked underneath 
prior to buying the truck because then I would have saw that there was a rusty situation. So underneath these old covers, I took them off, had to cut out all of the damage from the rust that was underneath. And then I sanded it down, painted it over, and I went ahead and threw on my own bushwhackers, my own covers because, you know, I just like the look of them and I think that it actually pulls the look of what I was going for um, even better. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your head between the wheel and the, bo and the body of the truck, in the front of the truck and in the bed of the truck. And you're gonna look with your flashlight uh, or your phone light or whatever for some wheel well rust, okay? So if it's really rusty back there and you can start pressing your finger through the rust and it's, and it's going right through it, you're gonna have bad wheel wells. Now surface rust and deep penetrating rust are a little bit different, right? Surface rust is something that's just on top of the surface. You could grind it down, you could sand it down, you could paint over it, and it's not really gonna impede on the safety of the vehicle. But if there's rust on the frame and you can push your finger through the rust and the frame is cracking, you don't want it, all right? Now, now, for most people, if you're gonna be getting a used truck, they don't want you to go under there with a hammer and start hammering away at the frame, okay? But if you do give it a little bit of effort, right, and it starts to crack or starts to break through the frame, that's not on you, okay? They can't say, hey, you broke my frame. You'd be like, what do I look like, Superman? No, I didn't break your frame. The frame was already busted up. I was just checking to make sure that if I get into this truck, or me and whoever, my kids or my dog, get into this truck, that we're not gonna end up in a ditch somewhere because this frame decided to twist, right? So with any of the rust that we're talking about, try and push through the rust. If you think it's a soft spot, push through the rust. If it feels soft, it's no dice that needs to go. Now, I'm not saying that if there's rockers, cab corners, or wheel well rust, that you shouldn't buy the truck, okay? I bought my truck knowing all of those things were already wrong with it, but I intended on fixing a lot of that myself. So if you have the ability to do that, fantastic. If you don't, it's gonna cost you a lot of money. So you might wanna stay away from that. So number three on our list, we're talking about ball joints, axles, we're talking about oil pan, we're talking about the rear differential and any place else on the truck that there's a greaser. If you're not sure what that is, it's like a little nipple that you can add grease to, right? But these are areas that are prone to breaking and areas where there's prone to have some leaks and little leaks can go a long way. So the reason I bring this up is because I can't make this up, but at one time in my life, I went to go get myself a car and I noticed that there was a little leak over by a ball joint. Right? So I said, oh, what's this whole, you know, this, look, this looks like it's pretty dirty. This looks like it's kind of messed up, right? And so I further inspected it and I could put my finger into it. And I noticed that the person who was trying to sell me that car, all right, had electrical taped over the hole of the ball joint and they spray painted over it, okay, so that you couldn't detect it. All right, so that's just one thing to look for. Now grease was still coming out of that hole. They tried to plug it with electrical tape and obviously it didn't do the trick. Okay, but if I've seen weird stuff out there then I know you've seen weird stuff out there and if people are going to the lengths of hiding stuff like that, guaranteed they're hiding way more than that. Okay, so you don't want to get yourself into that situation. And I was smart enough then to walk away from that one, but guys, I know that there's times where you might miss something, okay? So don't take it as a grain of salt. Don't say like, oh, okay, this guy tried to hide this, but you know, he seems, he seems cool. He seems like a cool guy. No, he's not cool, all right? Otherwise, he wouldn't be selling you a lemon, all right? So one of the things to look out for. Now, if you have a rear differential leak, you guys can go through my previous videos because I've had to battle this rear differential for a long time. Yep, so we got it all buttoned back up. I did the best I could with that. Cleaned up the threads and everything. But look at this. That's what I'm talking about. It's coming out of it's coming out of under there now. It's never ending. But I went ahead and I solved my problem. But not everybody's gonna solve that problem. So you're gonna have to continue to add fluid, okay? Gear oil. Okay, because you're gonna keep running out of it. Same thing with your oil pan. If someone had dropped the oil pan for whatever reason and it's leaking. You're gonna have to continue adding oil and you don't wanna to have to run yourself into that situation, okay? Is it the end of the world? No. Is it fixable? Yes. 
hopefully. This is just to give you a little bit of knowledge and tell you my little horror story that happened in the past so that you don't get yourself into this situation either. Listen, there could be other gremlins in there if they're hiding things, okay? It might look all cute and cuddly until you put a little bit of water on and then the gremlins start coming out like little demons, okay? So don't get yourself into that situation. There's times when you need to walk away. Maybe this is one of those times. Number four, we're talking about brakes, okay? Now, when I was first getting into car and truck buying, I remember my dad and some friends were like, make sure you check the brakes. Check the brakes on it. Well, how the heck do you check brakes? I had no idea. Do you just press on the brake pedal? Do you go over and do you give it a little sniff test? I had no clue how to check the brakes, so I'm gonna tell you guys what to look for, okay? You're looking at the brake rotor. If you got drums on there, I'm sorry, it's gonna be hard to look at, right? You don't know how bad the damage is until, you dri until you're driving it and you can hear the sound of those drums, right? But we're talking about disc brakes because right now we're living in the modern times and even if you got yourself an old truck, a lot of times you're gonna throw disc brakes on it. The disc behind the wheel that you can see, that's silver, that's your rotor, okay? I'm just, I'm just spitballing out there for people who might not know, okay? Now, if that rotor has a bunch of grooves in it, Probably means, one, that you're probably gonna need some pads. If it's making a noise while you're braking, it sounds like the caliper is grinding on that disc, the caliper is the thing that clamps on, then, you know, you're running yourself into a weird situation where the caliper may or may not be bad because if it doesn't compress, essentially, the piston in there when you're trying to like switch out the pads, then you're gonna have to get yourself a new caliper. And calipers are expensive, pads are cheap, right? Rotors are essentially cheap. Okay, so if you gotta replace rotors and pads, easy peasy lemon squeezy, but if you're gonna have to start replacing calipers, now that job it gets pretty pricey because now you're overhauling the braking system there, okay? And you're just switching everything out at that point, which means that you're gonna have like new stuff, new parts, so it should last a long time, but you know that that can cost also a lot of money. So you don't wanna be getting yourself into that little money pit, especially if you don't know how to do the work yourself. So what we're looking for is we're just looking for grooves on the rotor, all right? If you can run your finger up it, all right? Make sure it's not hot, you don't wanna burn yourself, but if you can run your finger up and you can feel the grooves in there, it's gonna need rotor and it's gonna need pads, at least. And if you're already hearing grinding when you're stopping this truck, then like the squeal when you're braking, you know that the caliper is making contact with that rotor somewhere and you could be doing damage to the caliper. So you might have to end up replacing calipers, all right? I'm just saying. That's what you look for when you're doing a brake check. All right, number five. You wanna make sure that you bring a napkin with you or you bring like a folded paper towel with you or a handkerchief or whatever you wanna bring to wipe off the oil because you're gonna to have to do an oil check on this truck, right? You know what good oil is supposed to look like. It's supposed to be like honey looking, right? It's supposed to be like even dark honey looking, but it cannot be like dark brown, chocolate milk, black, it can't be any of those colors, right? So what you wanna do is you wanna check the oil. First, to make sure that it has enough oil in it. Two, to examine the color of this oil because if it's not honey looking, then honey, you don't want it, all right? I'm just telling you right now. All right, that means the person is not keeping up with the routine maintenance of this truck. So even if you're gonna keep up with the routine maintenance on this truck, you'd have no idea what their routine maintenance looked like unless they can give you specific documents and paperwork, okay? Um, why is it important to have good oil? Because it's what cools your motor down, right? It runs through and keeps everything lubricated, right? Oil is essential even for like, you know, turbocharged vehicles because it helps to cool down turbochargers and whatnot. So you don't want to have crappy oil running through that system, all right? The other thing you want to check when you're in there is the coolant. Check the coolant level. Make sure it's topped off, all right? If it's not topped off, you might want to question why it's not topped off. If they're just like behind the times or whatever, then okay, but you know, you want to make sure it's topped off. Make sure one, that you're not like burning through coolant like super quick and two, that there's no leaks, all right? It's important to have coolant in there. A lot of times the heater won't even work if you don't have coolant in there. So you want to make sure that you have coolant in there, all right? Now when you're in there, you also want to check your washer fluid. You also want to look at your brake master cylinder. So that's usually going to be up by the front of your truck, right? Up by the front of the cab. Um, and you're gonna see it attached. There's gonna be like a, a brake booster. It's like this big circular thing. And you're gonna look up there and you're gonna see like a little area where you can add um, brake master cylinder fluid, brake fluid too. You wanna make sure that there's some brake fluid in there. All right? Uh, if there's not, then you could have a leak somewhere. And maybe what they're doing is they're just topping it off 
you know, maybe they topped it off before they met you somewhere, and by the time they're breaking through, they have a small leak somewhere in a brake line, and that fluid is slowly making its way down. Because the fluid that's in there should be in there, there shouldn't be any air, there shouldn't be any leaks getting into there, because you don't want to run into a brake failing situation, just then that could be catastrophe. Number six on our list, I'm going to ask you guys, does the heat and does the AC work? Okay, if the heat doesn't work, you might have a heater core issue, which is a pain in the butt a lot of times to switch out and it can be relatively expensive. And, uh, or it could be a coolant issue, so you wanna make sure you check the coolant a lot of times, right? So if the heat's not working, there could be a lot of issues with the trucks. So you wanna make sure that the heat's working. The AC, if it's not working, might not be a huge deal breaker for me. It's not really a huge deal breaker. I can just put the windows down. But you also want to make sure the AC works because, you know, we get those hot days. And if you got to switch out the whole AC system, okay, which I've done in the past, it's, a, it's not a fun job to do. It's not a fun job, especially if you're going all the way to the compressor and you're running all new lines through. It's just not fun to do. So, it can, and it can be pretty pricey, okay? so. Make sure that the heat and the AC work, okay? Now, going off of number six, we're going to number seven. Do the windows go up and down? Whether they're roll windows or they're automatic, we wanna make sure that the actuators are working. You wanna make sure that the windows go up and down. You don't wanna roll your window up or be rolling the window down and have the window on the inside of the door just fall down, okay? We've all seen it before, okay? So we wanna make sure that if we're gonna get ourselves into a new or used vehicle that you know, this is something that's gonna be working on the truck, so make sure the windows go up and down. Number eight on our list, do all the lights work? Do all the interior lights work? Do all the exterior lights work? Okay, and the reason why I say interior and exterior, exterior is self-explanatory, we need that for safety. But interior lights could be as simple as, you know, if something's out, could be as simple as a fuse. But, you know, I mean, I'm not gonna go through great lengths when I'm gonna be looking to get a used truck to be pulling fuses, right, out of these used trucks. But what I am saying that is that if you get this back home and all the fuses are good, then you might have a grounding issue. And if there's any aftermarket wiring, you might be getting yourself into a hairy situation because if somebody went ahead and started tapping into hots to wire up other interior lights, you're never gonna find where the issue is. Not, I'm not gonna say never, but you, it's gonna be difficult to find out where the issue is, okay? So if you're gonna be doing any custom wiring, I say best case scenario is to home run these wires. What I mean by that is go to a bar, a positive bus bar, and have yourself a neutral or grounding bus bar, and then have these go to the positive and negative uh, terminals on the battery. That way, if you actually have an issue and you label them, you know which hot or which ground are associated then with said interior light or exterior light. But not everybody's gonna do that, okay? Some people are gonna start tapping into the AC. I've seen a lot of people who do aftermarket radios in the Chevy that I have, they tap into the AC and guess what? I fell for it too. And as I did it, I was like, what the heck am I doing? Why am I tapping into the AC, right? So then I had to figure it out on my own here, and I just figured that the best case scenario is you wanna home run these wires, okay? Make sure everything works. And if you guys have any questions about that, you guys can check out my previous videos, how I wired my head unit, and how I went ahead and wired a lot of these other lights. So I'm just saying, it might not be a deal breaker, but you wanna make sure that the wiring is clean, that everything is working, all the lights are working, everything's working the way it's supposed to be working when you go ahead and get yourself this truck. If someone tries to pull the whole, well, it's 20 years old, well, it's 30 years old, Okay, well, you should still have a 30-year-old truck where all of the lights work. What are you trying to say? It's 30 years old, so you let it go to <laughs> shit. Oh. oh, wow. No, all right? You wanna take care of it. And now that you're picking up the truck, you wanna make sure that you're taking care of it and you're driving it for a long time, all right? So it's important just to make sure that things are working properly, especially the lights. Number nine on our list, we're talking about mileage. Check the mileage. Check to see if there's any paperwork. Check the Carfax, all right? With the technology these days, a lot of trucks are going to 200,000 miles just on routine maintenance. So you wanna make sure that the routine maintenance is kept to date. You know, I just saw an article that came out that said that there's no more new cars in the United States that are under $20,000. So with that, these cars and trucks better be lasting a very, very long time on routine maintenance. For $20,000, these trucks and cars better be going to 200,000 miles. Otherwise, go used. 
way used. Not like your mom's single man hating friend used. I'm talking used, low miles, something that I can work on and something that I was kept up to date as far as the maintenance goes. If you've made it this far into the video, why don't you consider liking? Maybe even subscribing, even better. Just hit that subscribe button over here to help this channel grow. All right, and by golly, if you went ahead and utilized some of these tips to either get yourself into a used truck or maybe stay away from a used truck, let me know below in the comments as well. This is stuff I wanna know. I wanna make sure that I'm providing some value to you. So with that, let's jump into number 10 on our list, our last one. Let's go for it. Let's bring it on home. Okay, guys, we made it all the way to the end. If you guys made it through this entire video, thank you guys so much, all right? I hope you guys learned something from this video, okay? Number 10. Turn off the radio. Turn down the AC or the heat, depending on what time of year it is, okay? And you guys wanna go for a test drive, all right? You're gonna be listening for what this truck has to offer for you, okay? We're listening for issues with the truck. We're listening for squealing belts. We're listening for exhaust leaks, okay? We're listening for things that are out of the ordinary when we go on this test drive. The other thing we're looking for is how's the transmission? Are we shifting through all the gears nicely? Is there any lag? Is the truck over revving before going into the next gear? Is it clunking, right, going into the next gear? These are all things you wanna look at because you don't wanna run yourself into a transmission problem. You don't wanna be running yourself into an issue where the maintenance wasn't done and maybe one of the belts is ready to go. And you don't wanna run yourself into an issue where there's an exhaust leak somewhere up by the motor because then you're gonna have to replace the headers and then with the headers you're gonna have to just start working your way back at that point and for me that wouldn't be a deal breaker because I'd be switching out that exhaust anyway does the car or the truck does it, does it break nice right or do you have to give it a lot on that pedal okay so these are just things to look for when you're going for a test drive now I also recommend don't talk to the person who you're in the truck with so it's usually the seller so if the seller's in the passenger seat and you're going for this test drive don't talk unless you have a question it's okay to tell someone like, hey, I'm just trying to like hear how this truck sounds. I want to hear how this car sounds. I want to make sure everything sounds correctly. I'm listening for rattles or whatever you're trying to be listening for. Okay, but we want to make sure that you're getting yourself into a good situation. Also, talking about transmissions, go ahead and put this truck in reverse. Make sure your reverse works. And make sure you can get the truck up to high enough speeds where you can get through all the gears. All right, you wanna be making sure you can get up to like 70 miles an hour, all right? And you wanna make sure that when you're braking, you can brake relatively quickly if you needed to, all right? The other thing you wanna look for is the parking brake. Making sure that you have a parking brake. When I got into my truck, it didn't have a parking brake. It was cut, somebody cut the parking brake. And I didn't, I didn't think to check it because it's not something that I usually engage, basically ever, unless I'm in a manual transmission, right? So I didn't check my parking brake. Um, and then what I noticed when I went to put it on the first time that the parking brake pedal went all the way to the floor. And that's when I realized that the parking brakes in the rear of the truck were completely shot and the cable was actually snapped or it was cut. So that's something that I had to go ahead and overhaul um, when I first got the truck. I had to go do a whole parking brake system all the way to the pedal. All right. So these are just things to look for. So when you get into this test drive, make sure your parking brake works. All right. You can engage, disengage. Make sure everything sounds correct. Make sure you're going through the gears and everything just feels right, it stops right, and it sounds right. And with that, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I hope you guys learned something, okay? You can take this list with you by just saving this video. If you guys took notes, fantastic. If not, fantastic also. Just make sure you go ahead and save this list. And share this video with someone who might be going to go pick up a used truck or used car just so they have some things that they can look for when they're going to get themselves into a new vehicle. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helped the channel out. And continue to help me to make these videos for you by keeping me motivated. Um, the next video we're going to be talking about turbocharging. All sorts of stuff. Alright. So we're going to be turbocharging. We're talking turbochargers. We're talking turbos that you can throw on trucks without replacing any internals okay so we're going to be talking about a lot of cool things all right so stay tuned for that video i will see you guys in the next video have a good day Every secret